let's start uh, today's session. Today our topic is about uh, moderator assessment, uh, actually mod uh, uh, hypothesis development for moderator and uh, assessment, different approaches for assessment of uh, moderator. So I uh, will try to cover uh, two main uh, methods for assessment of uh, moderator, but before that, uh, uh, I will try to explain uh, and give some example about uh, hypothesis uh, development for moderator uh, variable construct and uh, moderator hypothesis. Okay. Share my screen. And Okay, actually the, in the different uh, disciplines uh, of science like management, psychology, marketing, tourism, uh, we have some uh, moderating variable. And the uh, moderating variable, actually when we uh, apply moderating variable, we can uh, strengthen the uh, relationship between variables in our framework. But uh, actually, the uh, application of moderator is not for strengthen the uh, relationship, the effect of uh, some variables. Actually, when we have um, a moderator, uh, means uh, we assume there are some uh, differences for a specific relationship for different levels of moderator. For example, uh, when we have uh, gender as a moderator, it means when we introduce gender as a moderator for uh, some relationship in our framework, it means we believe that there are some differences, significant differences for certain relationship in our framework between male and female, between two groups of gender. Or for example, when we have the company size as a moderator, it means uh, we assume and based on literature, we can support that there is a significant difference between a small uh, company and large company for some certain relationship. So when we uh, introduce moderator, we believe for these differences, different level uh, for differences for different levels of moderator, right? So uh, in this situation, we can hypothesize uh, moderator, and we need to support uh, moderator hypothesis by again like. Uh, direct relationship, direct effect, or mediation effect that we already discussed. We have to support the moderator hypothesis by theory and also by uh, empirical study, previous empirical studies, right? So for hypothesis development, we actually need to follow same uh, approach with the direct effect, with mediation, uh, and the other hypothesis in our uh, framework, right? Uh, here I have some examples from uh, my uh, previous published work. For example, in this uh, paper that I published in uh, 2017, uh, in this paper, uh, we actually uh, compare effect of some antecedent on uh, resident perception between uh, rural and urban residents. 
So it means in this uh, study, we assume and we hypothesize the difference between uh, rural and urban resident and the uh, location is moderator in this study. So based on this moderator, we hypothesize uh, our moderation hypothesis, right? So let's look at the, a few hypotheses from this study. For example, in this study, uh, we have a relationship between community attachment and positive perception of resident. Positive perception of resident. But our moderator is location, right? Location of residency. So the first hypothesis is the positive effect of community attachment on resident perception is stronger in urban context compared to rural context. So our moderator is a uh, location of residency, urban and rural area. Uh, and uh, for this moderator, we uh, actually need to compare a relationship between or effect of community attachment on positive perception between these two groups. Right, so this is one way for uh, writing mediator hypothesis, moderator hypothesis. At the same time, I'm teaching, I should uh, accept the people that are coming to uh, session. So, okay. Also, we can say this is one way that the, when we know about uh, effect in these two contexts, for example, when we know the effect of community attachment on perception is a stronger, is a stronger or more positive in urban context, we can write this moderation hypothesis in the uh, same way that here we have written. Uh, the perception, the effect of com uh, community attachment on perception is stronger on urban context compared to rural context. But if we don't know which one is uh, stronger and which one is weaker, only we can mention about moderator. So we can say uh, location of residency moderate a relationship between uh, community attachment and positive perception to our tourism, right? So this is two ways of uh, hypothesizing moderator. But actually in this way, uh, in this paper, we hypothesize one tail because it's actually based on theory and based on literature. We knew that uh, the relationship is stronger in urban context, right? So we hypothesize in uh, one tail way, and uh, actually we have one tail hypothesis. But if we don't know about the direction, we don't know which one is stronger or weaker, or uh, uh, actually the, which one is uh, um, more positive or more negative, so we can hypothesize as a two tail hypothesis, but here we have one tail. Second hypothesis, for example, the negative effect of community attachment on resident perception is stronger in urban compared to rural or hypothesis five, we have the positive effect of economic gain on resident perception is stronger in a rural context. So this is uh, one way to uh, hypothesize uh, uh, moderation. And actually this is a recommended way. If we can support based on literature and based on theory that which one, which uh, 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 effect, effect for which group is stronger or weaker, so we can hypothesize in this way. This is another paper. Uh, and the, this paper also location is uh, residency of uh, uh, 
uh, people and location of residency is uh, moderator. But uh, location is vicinity of heritage site or out of heritage site. For the people that are living in the vicinity or within heritage site, uh, and the people are living uh, outside of uh, or far from heritage site. So in this paper, we compare the perception of these uh, people. So here you can see again the hypothesis based on this moderator. For example, hypothesis uh, two. Uh, I don't say hypothesis one because the hypothesis one is different. Uh, okay, I will explain. Hypothesis two is uh, about the effect of community attachment on resident perception. Again, is stronger for residents living within the, within the vicinity of heritage site compared to people are living far from heritage site, right? And the uh, hypothesis four, the effect of the environmental attitude on resident perception is uh, stronger for those uh, living within uh, vicinity of heritage site. So uh, this is uh, again uh, is one tail hypothesis for moderator. But here also we have another uh, hypothesis. For example, H1. H1 is community attachment is stronger among residents uh, living within the vicinity of heritage site. In this hypothesis, we don't talk about effect. And only we compare level of one variable for two different contexts, right? For the people, who, uh, those who are, uh, are living in uh, uh, heritage site or out of heritage site. So first hypothesis is not moderation hypothesis. And we apply actually t-test to uh, address and uh, to test the first hypothesis. But second hypothesis is moderation. Why? Because compare effect for two different situations, right? So uh, here we have uh, Again, one tail hypothesis for effect of uh, some antecedent on resident perception and moderation is location of residence, right? But uh, maybe the, you said the, okay, this hypothesis refer to two groups and multi-group analysis, not moderation. But actually moderation and multi-group analysis exactly or exactly same concept. And uh, actually, multi-group analysis uh, that when we uh, compare two different groups uh, is uh, under umbrella of moderation. So when we have the uh, moderator, also the hypothesis exactly will be same as multi-group analysis when we compare two groups. For example, if we have uh, if uh, we have involvement and uh, we measure involvement uh, as a continuous variable, as a scale variable with some items. But uh, we want to see the effect of community attachment on resident perception for the people with high and low level of involvement, right? For low and high level of involvement. In this case, exactly we hypothesize in the same way with this hypothesis. For this case, the hypothesis will be the effect of community attachment on resident perception is stronger, for example, or weaker for resident with high level of involvement or low level of involvement, right? So if we hypothesize in this way, means our hypothesis is one tail hypothesis. But if we don't know, actually we don't know one, which one is uh, weaker and which effect is stronger. For example, in this paper. Professor, uh, sorry, so, uh, sir, sorry to interrupt you, excuse me. Uh, can I ask uh, after my explanation, please? Uh, actually, uh, uh, sir, sorry to say, I jo uh, just joined meeting, and uh, today uh, I was confused about one tail and two tail. 
and when i uh, i joined the meeting you are talking about one kale and two tail so that, uh, that's why i'm asking about this okay, if you repeat one thing is not is not topic of today but at the end uh, i will explain one the meaning and uh, one tail and two tail for you uh, okay, okay thank you sir okay okay for example in this paper right in this paper we uh, actually gender is moderator for the effect of uh, engagement the tourist engagement dimensions on loyalty right but based on literature and based on uh, previous study based on theory and also based on previous study we could not uh, figure out the effect of dimension of uh, engagement on loyalty is stronger for male or female only we could uh, justify and uh, explain that these effect should be different for male and female right so here you can see two tail hypothesis there is a significant difference only we can say significant difference for the effect of uh, these dimensions on loyalty between male and female right another way to hypothesize this uh, uh, relationship and this uh, effect is uh, gender moderates uh, relationship between these antecedent and loyalty right so when we don't have uh, strong support from the theory and the literature to uh, identify the, the uh, sign of relationship to identify the sign of relationship so we can hypothesize to take and this is uh, the same for moderator when we cannot uh, identify the effect of uh, a, uh, the effect of a to b the effect of a to b is stronger for high level of moderator or low level of moderator so we have to hypothesize in two tailed way right but the, the most important things is uh, any way that we uh, hypothesize moderation uh, effect, we have to uh, justify and support based on specific theory and based on our theoretical framework and also based on previous studies, right? But this, uh, these are different ways for writing uh, moderation hypothesis. Okay, so there is no uh, any difference uh, any differences for hypothesis development when we apply different method for assessment of moderator. Hypothesis development in one thing should happen at the beginning and in uh, our literature review and assessment of moderator is another thing we have different methods for assessment of moderator we can choose based on our study and based on uh, nature of our variables okay so this is the way that we can hypothesize moderator uh, hypothesis okay Actually, there are two main uh, methods for assessment of moderator. One uh, well-known and uh, very the popular method for assessment of moderator is interaction effect. So actually, we create interaction effect and we assess interaction effect for assessment of moderator. So interaction effect is only one popular approach for assessment of moderator. But still the concept of moderator is to compare, is to compare 
relationship, this relationship, effect of x to y for, for different levels of moderator, right? So the concept of moderator is uh, independent from the method that we apply for assessment of a moderator. The concept of moderator always is to compare relationship for different levels of moderator. But interaction effect is one way. Interaction effect is one way for assessment of moderator and one way to compare these effects for different levels of moderator, right? Okay. When we apply interaction effect, when we apply interaction effect, this is a mathematical formula, a statistical equation for uh, representing interaction effect. Actually, when we apply, when we use interaction effect, we have these two uh, additional uh, relationship in our uh, framework. So we include, we include direct effect of moderator in our framework. And also we include effect of interaction effect. Effect of interaction effect between X, our independent variable and M, moderator in our framework. So, before including moderator, only we have y is b0 plus b1x, right? So this is our uh, uh, equation before including moderator. But when we decide to include moderator and uh, assess moderator using interaction effect, we actually include two more terms to this equation. These uh, two uh, additional terms are B2M, okay, this one, B2. And, okay, plus B3 X M. This term X M called interaction effect term. And uh, using this approach, we assess significance of this B3. We assess significance of this B3 to see this moderation is significant moderation for this uh, framework or not, or to understand, is there any significant difference for two levels of moderation for this effect? Right? So we assess this B3, significance of B3 significance of this interaction term. This formula, okay, can be changed to this one, right? Can be changed to this one. So here we have uh, again two terms, this term and this term, after including moderator. Okay, now, M is moderator. So now I want to explain why, uh, by assessing significance of interaction effect, we can conclude there is significant uh, difference between two levels of 
the data for two levels of moderator, okay? This M is moderator. For example, this M, we dichotomize to two levels, high and low, okay? Okay, if we, uh, for first level, we consider M0, for example, right? So Y will be B0 plus error for this term, plus B1X, right? So, this is value of y and relationship between x and y for low level of moderator. For example, here, if we, okay, this is, this line can represent this equation for low level of moderator. And now, we actually we want to calculate the value of b the value of y and relationship between y and x for high level of moderator for high level of moderator we assume one for high level of moderator or we can say if moderator ch change one unit okay if moderator change one unit so what will be this equation? After increasing one unit in moderator, this equation will change to y b0, b2, error, plus, okay. And the coefficient of x, will be B1 plus B3 X, right? So the coefficient of X will change to B1 plus B3. This coefficient is slope of this line. So for high level of moderator, the slope will change to this one. So the slope here is B1 plus B3, but the slope here is only B1, right? So these two lines are relationship between X and Y for low level and high level of moderator. Okay, if this difference, if the difference between these two lines and the difference between these two lines is B3, if the difference between these two lines is the slope of these two lines are significant, so it means B3 and coefficient of interaction effect is significant. It means the effect of X on Y is different for low level of moderator with this effect for high level of moderator. This one and this one. So this is the reason behind this method, interaction effect. So when we apply interaction effect, we compare the slope of line for low level and high level of moderator. So if this B3 is significant, means there is significant difference between uh, this effect for two level of moderator. This is the reason behind interaction effect. So if interaction effect is coefficient for interaction effect is positive, it means 
this effect x to y this effect is a stronger for high level of moderator for example if our moderator is involvement and we create interaction effect and see this b3 is significant and positive means the effect of x on y is a stronger for high level of involvement if we assume involvement as the two levels high and low so positive interaction effect means this relationship is this relationship is higher this effect this path coefficient or beta coefficient is higher for higher level of moderator so this is the way that we can understand the meaning of interaction effect and uh, interpret the uh, result of interaction effect for assessment of moderator. So here you can see, even when uh, we apply uh, interaction effect for assessment of moderator, we compare, we compare effect of X to Y for low level and high level of moderator, right? So uh, this is first common and uh, very popular approach for assessment of moderator. But this uh, method actually is uh, suitable when we have uh, continuous variable. We have scale variable. We have a variable or a construct with multi-item, right? So this method will be suitable and uh, recommended when we have this type of moderation. Here you can see, for example, uh, this is uh, for uh, two levels of uh, moderator and the effect of these two variables. So the effect of these two variables for one level of moderator is uh, this line, and for another level of moderator is this line. So you can see the slope of these two lines is almost uh, same, similar. So it means you cannot get significant difference for the effect of x the effect of x to y for two levels of moderator, for high level and low level of moderator. So it means moderator is not significant and the, the interaction effect won't be significant. But for assessment of moderator and uh, actually for creating interaction effect, because interaction effect is X, Y, right? Is X, Y. But for creating this term, there are different methods. In the literature, uh, at least there are four methods for creating uh, interaction effect. One method and very popular method is product indicator approach. Another one is two stage. Another one that is uh, uh, suggested by Wald, uh, 1982, is uh, a hybrid uh, method for creating interaction effect. And another method is uh, uh, orthogonalizing method, orthogonalizing approach. Uh, and uh, you can create interaction effect based on these different approaches. But all these approach are uh, used to create interaction effect. This is product indicator. Product indicator means, uh, for example, if we have two, uh, one exogenous variable and one moderator, and uh, each one is uh, measured by um, uh, a few items, multiple items. So interaction effect, when we want to create interaction effect using product indicator, it means we interact 
uh, item of the, each item of the independent variable with the item of moderator. So if you have x1 and x2, m1 and m2, you can see here x1, m1, x1, m2, x2, m1, and x2, m2. So this is interaction effect. So interaction effect construct, interaction effect variable will have four items. So this is uh, well, one approach to create uh, interaction effect and called the product indicator approach. Another approach is two stage. Here, again, you have, we have one exogenous variable and one uh, moderator with two items. So in first stage, we create score of latent variable and then interact score of uh, latent variable to create interaction effect. So interaction effect has only one item, only one item. Uh, for uh, it, this approach, uh, actually are recommend, uh, recommended in uh, different situations. For example, product indicator approach cannot be used when uh, one of our variable, uh, exogenous variable or independent variable or moderator is formative. If one of uh, these variables are formative, we have to use uh, two stage approach. Okay. Uh, here, there are some advantages and disadvantages of these different approach. Uh, based on uh, this study by Hensler and Chin 2010, two stage and hybrid approach have a high level of statistical power compared to other two approaches other two approaches of uh, product indicator and uh, uh, orthogonalizing uh, approach. But uh, when we have a few indicators or a few observation, a few cases, orthogonalizing approach uh, seems to be a better approach, right? Uh, but uh, hybrid approach uh, so far, none of software can actually implement high, hybrid approach. So uh, uh, two stage approach and product indicator approach uh, at the moment are most popular and best approach for based on uh, the statistical software that we uh, use. Uh, but uh, also, this study uh, identified that uh, estimated parameters of interaction effect, uh, product indicator approach is better than to a stage approach. But if we have formative moderator or formative independent variable, one of the variable involved in interaction effect of formative to a stage approach is suitable to analyze interaction. Uh, another thing that we calculate for assessment of moderator is the uh, effect size, but uh, uh, effect size is not uh, uh, recommended uh, uh, for moderator. Here, uh, Chin mentioned that uh, if uh, even small interaction uh, uh, effect and the small effect size can be meaningful, because actually we want to compare, we want to compare effect of uh, X to Y for two levels of uh, moderator. So uh, when we get significant interaction effect, it means the effect is, uh, it means these uh, two effects are significantly different. So this should be enough. Even uh, when we get very small sample size, right? Okay, for interaction effect, also we have uh, some advanced topic on uh, assessment of moderator, but uh, using interaction effect, for ex one of them is, for example, a three way interaction effect. Three way interaction effect means when we have two different mediators and we want to compare uh, different, uh, we want to compare the effect for these uh, different levels. For example, here we have two moderators. And uh, when we combine these two moderators, we have 
four different levels, right? Four different levels. And uh, these four different levels can uh, be compared. And the effect of X to Y can be compared between these four levels. So if we have this case, uh, this uh, variable can be called the uh, three-way interaction. This paper is very good, the uh, paper Dawson 2013, to understand the meaning of uh, moderator and different types of moderator. Okay, this is part of uh, a Dawson paper that discuss uh, three-way interaction effect. Okay. So, uh, now we uh, actually review the concept of uh, uh, interaction effect and how using interaction effect we can assess moderate. Let's go to the software and uh, see how we can implement uh, this uh, method in uh, smart VLS software. Later, we will back to uh, multi-group analysis. Multi-group analysis is another way, another method to assess moderate. Okay, let's go to the software. Okay, now we are in a smart VLS software and we want to assess uh, moderator using interaction effect and see how we can perform, uh, uh, how we can assess uh, moderator using uh, this method. Okay, go to uh, our uh, model that we use for this course. This is uh, our model that we uh, actually uh, use for other topics. Here we have uh, four antecedents uh, that these four antecedents influence on perceived impact and uh, perceived impact influence on support for tourism. Now we want to introduce involvement. Uh, as a moderator between perceived impact and support. So we hypothesize, we have two hypotheses. Uh, sorry, we have one hypothesis for this uh, relationship, moderation hypothesis. Uh, and this hypothesis is uh, the effect of perceived impact on support for tourism development is stronger for resident with a high level of involvement. Is stronger for people with the high, for resident with high level of in, uh, involvement compared to resident with low level of involvement. So this is a, a moderation hypothesis in uh, our study. Now we want to test this moderation. Okay, in a smart PLS, uh, first we need to uh, uh, create uh, this. Uh, moderation variable. This is uh, involvement. And uh, the item to measure involvement are here. So now we have this uh, involvement. And uh, we need to connect involvement to support, the first step. So now we add the involvement in our uh, framework. But still, we haven't introduced involvement as a moderator. To introduce involvement as a moderator, we need to click on moderation effect. When you click on moderation effect, you need to click on dependent variable. The variable that IV and moderator affect on this variable, we have uh, 
perceived impact as an independent variable here, exogenous. Uh, for this uh, frame, uh, for this uh, uh, moderator uh, effect, this is uh, independent variable, right? And involvement is uh, moderator. So we click on dependent variable. So we will transfer to this way. Here we can uh, actually create interaction. We have two different boxes here. If we click on first one, you can see two variables. Involvement is uh, our mediator. So we click on involvement as a mediate, as a moderator, the moderator. And the independent variable is perceived. You can choose uh, one of these methods. So orthogonalizing approach is for uh, some situation that we have a few indicators or a few cases in our uh, study. So we don't choose this one. We can choose one of these two product indicator or two stage. Default is two stage, but uh, if both uh, independent variable and moderator are reflected, we can choose either a product indicator or two stage. But if one of them is formative, we have to choose two stage. So we keep two stage here, and uh, uh, no need to change any of this uh, setting and just click. So now we have this interaction, right? So we have this interaction. This uh, moderating effect actually uh, interaction effect of uh, perceived impact and involvement. Perceived impact and involvement. So now we need to run PLS algorithm first. and see path coefficient. In path coefficient, here you can see moderating effect. This moderating effect is interaction effect between uh, perceived impact and involvement. So here you can see this uh, interaction effect is minus 0.078. But still, we don't know this is uh, significant or not. But here, we can see this is negative, not positive, that we hypothesize. Negative, if uh, in the uh, next stage after bootstrapping, you find it uh, significant. So negative significant means the effect of perceived impact on support will be stronger for a resident with low level of involvement, not high level, because this interaction effect is negative. But we need to check significance of this interaction effect. To check significance of this interaction effect, we need to run bootstrap. Bootstrapping uh, subsample, you have to choose uh, 5,000, but here we choose 500 only to do faster. And uh, you can choose one tail or two tail based on your uh, hypothesis. Here we choose uh, one tail and uh, click on calculation. So uh, after bootstrapping, we can see the result of assessment of significance of interaction, right? Okay, interaction effect. Interaction effect is not significant. So the p-value of interaction effect is 0 0.087. So it's higher than 0 0.05. Also, you can check confidence interval bias corrected. And here you can see zero falls between lower and upper level of confidence interval. It means interaction effect is not significant. So interaction effect is not significant means involvement is not a significant moderator for the effect of perceived impact on support. All right.
Okay. And here also you can see the slope. So based on uh, bootstrapping and assessment of uh, based on p-value and confidence interval, we found the, this uh, interaction effect is not significant. Also here we can see the slope, simple slope analysis. Okay. If you click on simple slope analysis, you can see three different lines here. One line is uh, pink one is for involvement minus one standard deviation. Blue one is involvement at mean and the green one involvement at uh, uh, plus one standard deviation. So we have relationship, we have a, a effect of X to Y perceived impact on support for three different levels of uh, moderator. For mean, for minus uh, uh, one standard deviation and uh, plus one standard deviation. So for these three levels of uh, moderator, you can see these three lines are almost parallel. So the slope of these three lines are almost same, right? So the slope of these three lines are not significantly different. So this result is consistent with assessment of significance of interaction effect because also based on interaction effect assessment, we found this interaction effect is not significant. Means these three lines and these three effects are not significantly different. So it means this variable is not significant moderator for the effect of perceived impact on support for tourism. Okay, so uh, this is a concept of uh, interaction effect and uh, the way that we uh, implement interaction effect in uh, smart business. If you agree, let me complete uh, also multi-group analysis and then we can go back to uh, your question. I think this way is better way. Okay. Okay. Let's go again to uh, our slides. Okay, now this is uh, another way that actually we compare between uh, effect of X to Y. So, so far we understand, uh, we uh, actually we got this idea that uh, moderator always is to compare effect of X to Y for different levels of moderator variable. Interaction effect, multi-group analysis are two different methods, two different ways to assess this, uh, the significance of these differences, right? So, but in multi-group analysis, actually it's suitable for some situation that we have a categorical variable, a dichotomous variable, for example, gender. If we have a, a variable like gender and we want to compare uh, our relationship for two levels of gender, so it's better to apply multi-group analysis. Or we want to do some uh, cross-national or cross-cultural studies. So we want to compare data for uh, some countries, different countries, right? So, uh, or two different locations. So for this type of study, it's better to uh, use multi-group analysis method for assessment of moderator. But still the concept of moderator, the way of hypothesis development, 
or same, right? A multi-group analysis, actually, the, we compare uh, the uh, path coefficient or beta coefficient for two different groups. If uh, the path coefficient for group one, for example, is uh, B1, and for group two is B2, using multi-group analysis, we compare these two. And uh, actually, we calculate significance of, significance of uh, B1 minus B2. So we create this term and we assess significance of this term in multi-group analysis. So in multi-group analysis, different with interaction effect, we split data to two different groups and uh, run model for group one and group two and compare Path coefficient or beta coefficient from group one and group two, and create this term and see this term whether this term is significant or not. So this is the way that we do in multi-group analysis. There are different approach for this comparison and the. Uh, to calculate, to calculate significance of B1 minus B2. There are different approach for calculation of significance of B1 minus B2. These three approaches are uh, most common approaches uh, in the literature, par uh, parametric test. Uh, uh, another test is the permutation test suggested by Chin. And uh, another method is uh, suggested by Hensler. Uh, we, this is a non-parametric procedure and non-parametric approach that we call this approach in uh, PLS context, uh, MGA PLS or PLS MGA, right? So uh, this is, uh, these three uh, approaches are common approach uh, in the literature, but first approach is a parametric approach. But this term is a non-parametric term. So the result of parametric approach should not be a valid result to assess significance of this term. And actually, we have to apply non-parametric tests. These two tests, these two methods are non-parametric methods to calculate significance of B1 minus B2. Okay, here I have some formula to, this formula are a formula to calculate significance of pad one minus pad two using parametric method. But actually parametric method is suitable, is not suitable for this term because uh, 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 this term uh, B1 minus B2 is non-parametric term. Uh, so the literature uh, recommended non-parametric methods. But uh, when we apply uh, multi-group analysis, actually before comparing path coefficient and assess significance of uh, differences of path coefficient, we have to check uh, measurement invariance. And we need to make sure about measurement invariance. What's the meaning of measurement invariance? The meaning, of, the meaning of measurement invariance is we need to make sure that our measurement model for these two groups are invariant, are not different, are identical. Why? Because when we want to go to multi-group analysis stage and assess significance of the difference between path coefficient, significance of between path coefficient, we need to make sure that if we get significant difference between 
path from group one and group two, this difference is not because of differences between measurement model of group one and group two. This is because of significant difference between structural model, right? So this is the meaning of measurement invariance. We need to make sure that measurement model is invariant for group one and group two. So the uh, requirement for performing MGA is to check and to test measurement invariance. There are different methods for assessment of uh, measurement invariance. Some methods are called parametric method. In parametric method, we uh, compare loading and some recent literature, especially in PLS, suggested to compare weights between group one and group two. And if 50% of weight or loading, outer loading, are not significantly different, we can get partial measurement invariance. So we can uh, actually go to next step to assess, uh, to compare uh, a structural model between two groups, to, as, uh, to compare path coefficient between two groups, right? So this method called parametric uh, measurement invariance testing. But uh, this paper published in 2016 by uh, Jorgen Sler, Christian Ringle, and Marco Sarset, they suggested another method for a context of PLS, because actually PLS is a composite-based approach. So they suggested the measurement invariance for composite. And uh, they discuss parametric approach for measurement, uh, measurement invariance is uh, not suitable for uh, PLS context and is uh, more suitable for uh, factor-based context, right? So they suggested uh, a composite uh, test for measurement invariance and call this method MECOM, measurement invariance for composite. So in PLS, before uh, comparing path coefficient between two groups, we have to do measurement, measurement invariance testing using this approach, MECOM approach. In MECOM approach, we have three main steps. We have three main steps. The first step for uh, this MECOM approach is uh, uh, configural invariance. Configural invariance, in this uh, actually step, we need to make sure same algorithm and the same uh, actually situation for uh, our measurement model in these two groups. Uh, the associated indicators for each construct in two groups should be identical. The methods of treating data, like coding, reverse coding, handling missing value and outlier standardization, any method to uh, treating data and dealing with data should be identical in two groups. And the algorithms applied to inner model and outer model also should be same for two groups. So first step of uh, MECOM is configural invariance. This is not, this uh, step doesn't have anything with the analysis. Before uh, actually starting analysis, we need to make sure about uh, these uh, uh, similar algorithm in two groups, same algorithm in two groups. So this is first step for MECO. 
Second step is compositional invariance. In compositional invariance, we calculate correlation between construct A, for example, in group one and group two. Construct B in group one and group two. And this, this correlation should be very close to one. So it means these two constructs should be identical, right? So this is second step of MECOM, compositional invariance. And the third step of MECOM is equality of mean and variances of construct between two groups. So it means mean of each construct in group one and group two should not be significantly different. And also variance of construct X in group one and group two should not be significantly different. But for uh, actually implementing MGA, only we need partial measurement invariance. Partial measurement invariance it means we need to meet, we need to pass two first steps, configural invariance and compositional invariance. So if we pass these two steps, we can go for multi-group analysis and compare paths, compare path coefficient. So to compare path coefficient, Third step is not compulsory. Only we need to meet partial measurement invariance. But if you want to combine your data from group one and group two and assess your model measurement and a structural model, based on combination of data from group one and group two, you have to pass these three steps. It means you need to get equal mean and equal variance for two groups. If you pass these three steps, you can get full measurement invariance. So we have three steps. Step one, configural, and uh, step two, compositional invariance is compulsory and requirement for MGA. But step three is not compulsory to perform MGA, but if you want to pool your data, if you want to combine your data and assess model based on combined data or pooled data, you have to pass three steps and get full measurement invariance. Uh, this is uh, some example uh, from uh, my papers uh, uh, for reporting result of configural invariance and compositional invariance and also equal mean and variance. And uh, here you can see we uh, actually got uh, partial measurement invariance, but not full measurement invariance. So it means we can compare these two groups and we can go for MGA, but we cannot run model for uh, full data because we don't have full measurement invariance for some of the variables, some of the constraints. So here also you can see, um, okay, this is the result of uh, multi-group analysis. So an example, so here we have a path coefficient for one group, path coefficient for another group, and the uh, uh, differences between these path coefficients. Uh, and here we actually apply two tests, Hensler's MGA and the, or PLS MGA and the permutation test to check the significance of difference between paths for multi-group analysis. So I will show you now uh, how we can perform MGA and uh, before that MECOM in smart group.
Okay. So uh, again, go back to our framework and let me delete uh, this uh, moderation and go to original model. Delete this one. So we have this original model. And for this original model, we want to compare We want to compare uh, these four effects for uh, male and female. So gender is moderator for this model, but we want to perform multi-group analysis. Okay, to perform multi-group analysis, the first step is to create uh, data or split data in two groups. To split data in two groups, we uh, need to go to data set. So when you click on data set, you can see your data set here and some options here. Generate data groups or add data groups. So if you click on generate data groups, so you can uh, generate the data here, for example, uh, gender. And uh, here you have uh, a, a different boxes to choose variable. In first box, I, if you click on this one, this tab, you can see gender here. When you click on gender, okay. If I, I click on okay, data will uh, be split to two groups, male and female. But also I can create more than one group more than two groups. For example, the second box, the second column, I can choose gender, age. If I choose age here, so 10 groups will be generated, right? For uh, male, because for age, we have, uh, for age, we have five groups and for gender, two groups, right? So uh, interaction of these two uh, variable will be 10 groups. Okay, just click on this one and uh, see the process. And uh, again, I'll go back to, okay. so here you can see 10 groups, gender one and uh, age one, gender one, age two, gender one, age three, and uh, until gender two, group two and age five. And here you can see the number of cases in each group. So you can use these uh, different groups for your uh, analysis. But uh, and now I don't want these groups, so just delete it. Here you can edit or delete these groups, okay? So again, go back to generate data group and only choose uh, gender because I need two groups, okay? And here you can set minimum cases for each group. Okay, put to at least to have 50 cases in each group. Click on OK. And here you can see two groups. Here you can delete or edit. Group one is male. So I can edit the name to work better for in my analysis. So this is male. And the group two is female. So now I have two groups, right? And uh, I split data to two different groups, male and female. Uh, number of females is uh, 165 and male is 247. So the number of groups is not uh, necessary to be the same, can be different. But each group, you need adequate sample size. So one important point, when you run multi-group analysis, you need to make sure sample size for each group is enough, sufficient. And in each group, you have minimum sample size. Okay. okay, so now we have uh, these two groups here. Uh, we can run, uh, 
if you want to run analysis and uh, report the result of measurement model and a structural model, you can uh, run PLS algorithm. But here you have choice to select these two groups. So if you choose uh, these two groups and uh, click on start, here you can get the result for a complete data for female and for male. So you have data here for a measurement model and a structural model for these two groups. If you haven't checked MECOM, you cannot report complete data. If you don't meet your data, doesn't mean uh, a full measurement invariance, you cannot report full data or complete data for a measurement model and a structural model. And only you have to report uh, measurement and a structural model assessment for each group, right? So here you can see male and female, and you can get the result for uh, measurement model and a structural model for this uh, for, uh, from this result, okay? But uh, for MECOM and the MGA, we don't need this part. This part actually is for assessment of measurement model and structural model for two groups. Okay, for uh, MGA, the first step is uh, testing measurement invariance. For testing measurement invariance, in the calculate option, here we have different options for analysis. Permu uh, permutation is first things that we need to perform for to check the result of measurement invariance. So click on permutation. And in permutation, you have to select group one and group two. Okay, let's say group one is female and group two is male. Here you can choose the number of permutations. The recommended number is 5,000, but I don't choose 5,000 because it takes long time to perform. Just I choose uh, 500. Here you can choose one tail or two tail. If uh, actually for assessment of measurement model, if you perform permutation for assessment of measurement model, one tail and two tail uh, for measurement invariance, one tail and two tail is not very significant. Just want to make sure that the, uh, the, uh, uh, these two measurement models are invariant and are not significantly different. So you can keep two tail and click on stop. Okay. So here you can see a different result for based on permutation. So actually permutation is type of the comparison between these two methods. So also you can use the result of the permutation for path coefficient to compare these two groups. But for next step, for first step, we have to go to MECOM. Here, when you perform a permutation, here you have result of MECOM, measurement invariance for composite. So if you click on MECOM, you have only step two and step three. So you know, step one is not something with analysis. Step one is for algorithm that we apply to treat data for group one and group two. For missing value, for outlier, uh, algorithm for uh, outer model assessment, uh, structural model assessment, and then uh, uh, actually number of item or items to measure each construct for group one and group two, they all should be identical. So this is first step. So we can report first step based on, based on this in uh, first place. Here only we have result of step two and step three. 
Step two is compositional invariance. Okay, here we have a step two. First row is the name of variables. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six variables, six construct, right? So we have six construct in our framework. This is the name. This is correlation. This column is correlation between community attachment of first group, female and male. This one is correlation between cultural attitude based on data from male and data from female. So here you can see correlation. Okay, so these correlations should be very close to one. But how we can assess closeness to one based on this value? This original correlation should be based on, should be between this lower level of confidence interval and one. So it means for community attachment, this value should be between 0 0.979 and one. The value of correlation here is 0 0.995. So this is somewhere between these two values, right? So this one is not significantly different from one. The software that when you get green value means uh, this value is between this and this value and one. This value and one. Also here, you can see permutation p-value. To get significant correlation means uh, not different correlation with one, here p-value should be higher than 0 0.05, higher than, not lower. So here you can get, you can check compositional invariance. You need to compare this value, this correlation with this range, and you can also check this p-value, permutation p-value. If all construct, the correlation of all construct between two groups are very close to one or are not significantly different with one, based on this result, the p-value, you can conclude compositional invariance for this framework, for all these constraints. So when you pass this step, you can perform, you can perform multi-group analysis. This is partial measurement invariance. But if you want to see whether you can combine your data, you can pool your data or not, you need to check step three, equality of mean and variance. So this framework is very good. So the, here also you can get uh, equal mean, equal means and variance. For equal means here, this is, uh, difference between uh, mean value of community attachment uh, group one and group two between female and male. If this value, if this value falls within this range 
or it's between lower level of confidence interval and higher level of confidence interval, it means this value is not significantly different from zero. So means, so means are equal, right? Means are equal. Here is minus 0 0.115, okay? Lower level is minus 0 0.195 and higher level is 0 0.205. So this value is between these two. Second one, 0 0.050. So this value is somewhere between these two values. And for others. Also for variance. Here is differences between variance of community attachment between male and female. Again, this variance should be somewhere between lower level of confidence interval and higher level of confidence interval. If it's between these two value means this uh, difference is not significantly different from zero. So variance of community attachment is equal for male and female group. Okay, if you get, if you get equal mean for all construct and equal mean for equal variance, for all construct, it means you establish full measurement invariance. So it means you can pool your data and assess measurement model and structural model based on pooled data, based on combined data. But if you cannot get uh, uh, if you cannot get equal variance or mean for uh, even one construct. So it means you cannot establish full measurement invariance and you cannot pool your data. Okay. For example, if I show my, some of my papers, for example, this paper. You can see the paper? Yes? No, we can't see. No. Okay. Now you can see. Yes. Okay. For example, in this paper, if I'm going to a permutation uh, table, okay. This is the result of the measurement invariance. So for this result, here you can see configural invariance, a reported configural invariance, and here is compositional invariance, okay? Is yes, because all these values uh, fall uh, within this range, but for equal mean and equal variance. For example, for this tree, for this tree here, the difference between mean is 0 0.425. And the, this value is not within this range. So the mean, the means of these two groups for this variable are not equal. So here is no, not equal. For this one, no. And for this one also no. But for this three, we can get equal means. Also for variance, some of them are equal and some of the, them are not. So here, we, can establish, we cannot establish uh, full measurement invariance. Only we can establish partial measurement invariance. So we can go for multi-group analysis, but we cannot pool our data. 
So if you go to, uh, through this paper, you can see only we assess measurement model and structural model for two different groups. And we cannot assess measurement model and structural model for combined data, for full model, right? Okay. Now is the, this is the result of MECO. When we get uh, at least partial measurement invariance, now uh, we need to go to run MGA, multiple uh, multi-group analysis. Also here we can get the result of uh, comparison between path coefficient. Because permutation, permutation is one of the non-parametric method for to come uh, for uh, multi-group analysis, right? Okay, here uh, we can see this is the result for female. This is the result for male. This is the difference between male and female. Okay, and uh, we have here confidence interval lower level and upper level, and we have here result of uh, permutation p-value. If this, uh, if the difference between uh, path coefficient, here you can see p-value. And based on this p-value, only one result is only one result is significantly different from zero because here is different with equal mean and equal variance, right? Here we need to see, we need to check that uh, this difference between path coefficient should be significantly different from zero. So, if the difference is significantly different from zero means these two path coefficients are significantly different. Okay, so we can compare this, uh, if this value, again, if this value is somewhere between lower and upper level of confidence interval, it means this difference is not significantly different from zero. This value is not significantly different from zero. But if it's not between these two value, it means is higher than zero, is significantly different from zero. So we have significant difference between two groups, okay? For example, first one, 0 0.097. 0 0.097 is between these two value, right? So the p-value is red and higher than 0 0.05. So this value is not significantly, this uh, path coefficient is not significantly different between two groups. Also second one, this value is somewhere between these two. Third one, but this one, is minus 0 0.206. You can see this value is not between these two, lower and upper level. And here you can see p-value. So it's green. So it means path coefficient for the effect of only path coefficient for the effect of environmental attitude on perceived impact is different between male and female. And others are not significantly different. So this is the result for multi-group analysis that we can get from permutation. Always is good to report uh, MGA or differences between path coefficient based on two groups, based on two different uh, methods. Here is one method. And if we want to get the result from MGA to report the uh, two methods, we need to run MGA. 
and MGA, one group male and female and male, and the starch calculation. So when we uh, apply MGA, again here, in multi-group analysis, here we have result of multi-group analysis based on different methods. Parametric test, this test, confidence interval, just tracking. So we have result for some tests, but Non-parametric test for multi-group analysis is PLS and GA. This is Hensler method. Okay, so here you can see based on Hensler method, we have two significant difference. So significant difference for two paths: effect of environmental attitude on perceived impact and perceived impact on software. But based on permut permutation. only we have one significant difference. So if you report both methods and uh, you uh, need the significant, dif significant difference from both methods, here only you can uh, support the difference between uh, effect of environmental attitude on perceived impact between male and female. But if you apply this method, you can get two different, uh, significant difference between two different, okay? And uh, okay, for example, in this paper, here is a result of hypothesis testing. So we have some relationship. We have had coefficient for two different cases for uh, rural area and urban area. So we have confidence interval for uh, first group, confidence interval for second group, had coefficient differences between group one and group two. And here we actually uh, apply these two methods, Hensler MGA and permutation test, and reported the result for these two. But uh, luckily for our, our paper, uh, the result are uh, significant for both groups, for both uh, approaches, uh, based on Hensler test and based on permutation test. So you can here see yes and yes, yes and yes, but the other uh, relationships uh, have no significant difference between group one and group. So this is the way that you can report result of first uh, measurement invariance and then the result of hypothesis testing based on these two. Or it's your choice. Uh, you can also report only one. Okay, this is uh, uh, for uh, actually assessment of a moderator uh, using infraction effect and uh, how we perform uh, infraction effect and interpret the result in a smart VLS and also multi-group analysis uh, and the MECOM as a requirement for multi-group analysis. Okay, now uh, we can go for your question. Uh, I hope, uh, Prof, may I ask a question about multi-group analysis? Please louder because I cannot hear you. Hello, uh, can you listen now? Prof? Yes, yes, yeah, I can. Uh, okay. Uh, so my question is regarding uh, multi-group analysis, uh, especially for the uh, first step. Uh, once we once we uh, like uh, assess the measurement model for each group separately, because uh, first we need to assure the measurement model separately, right? Yes. At the yeah. Okay. So if it is the case, for example, uh, the one of the items of, for example, attitudes in one group. Among the, let's say, four, I have four items in attitudes, and one item has to be deleted to assure the conversion validity. And for mm -hmm. other group, uh, the four items are okay. So what should I do? Because uh, the items will be dissimilar between two groups. If you want to uh, go for multi-group analysis, you have to delete item from two groups. 
because uh, if, if you only delete from one groups, it means you violate the first requirement, first step, configural invariants. Yeah, I, uh, so, so what- need to establish configural invariants and uh, without configural invariants, we cannot go for next step. Yeah. Uh, one of the case that um, like I, I experienced, like I encountered that uh, I had three, uh, three items for a certain construct. So for one group, it was only one item, which was low factor loading and uh, the conversion validity also low. So once I deleted, then for other 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 group, uh, it was almost same. But once I am trying to uh, know the evaluate the discriminant validity, uh, so to to maintain equal number of items, uh, only one items retained for that construct. Like I had to delete two items out of the three. So yeah, with the yeah. one item, so sh should should I continue with that single item to go for me? You have no choice. If you want to go for multi-group analysis, you need to establish configural invariants. Yes. Mm -hmm. And without configural in and the, the main uh, uh, requirement for configural invariants is to have the identical uh, method, algorithm, and the items for both groups for measurement of both groups. If you go for a different, if you go with different items, right, for each construct for uh, two groups, so uh, you don't know at the end, you don't know if you get difference between path coefficient, you don't know this difference is because of the measurement model or because of the difference in structural level. Yeah, got it, got the point, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and another I... question, another question, I approve Baker also, she, he written in, in, in the PLS forum about that uh, assessing measurement models separately before running them in MECOM or after running the MECOM. So one of the comments I remember, he mentioned that uh, you can run measurement model analysis after running the MECOM, uh, which, which clearly violating that procedure because before Adding the MECOM at the configural invariance, we have to establish that all the measurement. Oh. No, 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 no. It, this uh, doesn't violate the, this step because actually, if you assess measurement model and the structural model after running MECOM, it means you uh, apply a measurement, same measurement model for two groups, right? Yeah, right. So, so you apply uh, same items and same algorithm for configural uh, invariance for two groups. So we run MECOM. Uh, this point, actually, the advantage of this point, if if you run MECOM first, mm -hmm. you, based on the result of MECOM, you can see um, uh, um, actually the you uh, establish only partial measurement invariance or full measurement invariance. Then when you establish, uh, based on the result, you can decide that you have to run and you have to assess measurement and structural model only for two groups, or you can combine your data and run for complete model based on the result of MECOM. So this is the advantage of uh, running MECOM before assessment of measurement model and structural model. Got my point? Uh, but just a little bit confusion about there. Uh, if if I have previously defined two groups, and if I my hypothesis is uh, regarding the MGA, uh, if I hypothesize all the relations. Yeah, if hypothesis is only unrelated related to MGA, so in that you don't need. You mean that you don't need to run. Uh, uh, Assessment of measurement model and structural model for full data or combined data, right? Right. Yes. right. So it depends on your Prof. hypothesis. Prof, can I ask questions? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Yasser Sul. Thank you for providing this opportunity again. Uh, okay. I have a few questions. Uh, first one is uh, as per your experience, uh, I've, I've seen your papers, a lot, you have done a lot of work uh, on moderation. Uh, I'm comparing comparing two approaches, two-stage and product indicator approach for moderation, uh, which uh, approach uh, uh, gives you better results. Uh, I have few questions. Can I ask in one go or one by one? Yeah. 
Yeah, you can ask, ask your question, question. and uh, if okay. I for, forgot your question, I will uh, ask you to again. Second, okay. Second question is, uh, uh, what should be the minimum percentage for comparison? Uh, like, if uh, if a male is sixty percent of the total uh, respondent and uh, female is forty percent, uh, or what? Okay, and then ratio required. For moderation, uh, normally when you when you do moderation analysis, most of the times the results are you know insignificant. Uh, does sample size play a role? If if it does, uh, what should be the minimum or threshold level for the sample size? Okay. And last question, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, 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 this is for my understanding. It will help them others also. And last. Okay. Uh, you you told uh, you you uh, comprehensively told about the two approaches. One is uh, Hansler's MGA, very simple one, and the second one is uh, like a comprehensive approach, like MECOM and configurational uh, permutation test. Or uh, is it uh, the, the first, Hansler... first one is interaction effect, not Hansler method. Interaction effect. Interaction effect. Uh, in terms of uh, like uh, permutation test and uh, the Hansler's MGA, which is quite simple as compared to uh, the permutation uh, test, uh, like you have to ensure configurable and uh, compositional images. Uh, is it the Hansler's MGA acceptable for the publications because it's quite simple? It gives you, you know, in one in one table gives you all the differences among these all things. So okay. basically, I've got four questions. <laughs> Four or three? Four, four, four. Because I just uh, realized three. Okay, uh, let me the, uh, answer question. If uh, something missed, you can explain and ask again. Uh, okay. First one for... Um, I forgot the first one. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked, can I ask in okay. one go or one more? Very, one? very fast. What was the first one? Uh, whether uh, two stage or product indicator, okay. which approach, approach okay. gives you better results okay. in terms of significance? Uh, I, I didn't do any simulation to compare the result of the two stage and the product of uh, and the product indicator approach. But uh, actually, the, the study that they did simulation, they said the uh, product indicator approach give uh, better result for estimation of uh, interaction effect. Right. Okay. But if uh, but the power of analysis is uh, higher for a two stage approach. But if you have uh, uh, one of your variable, independent variable or moderator, or one of them is uh, formative, you have no choice and you have to use two stage. So okay. in case okay. that both are reflective, is up to you. You can uh, choose. Uh, a product indicator or to a stage and uh, literature recommend the uh, product indicators because it uh, can give a better estimation for uh, interaction effect. First one. Second one for minimum sample size for two groups. There is no any magic number or percentage for each group, but uh, the golden rule is uh, each group you need to have minimum sample size. So when you calculate minimum sample size for, an, for your analysis, for example, based on power analysis or, or other methods, right? When you calculate minimum sample size, you need to meet minimum sample size for each group. For example, if uh, based on power analysis, you get minimum, based on your framework, you get minimum sample size as sample size of 160, it means when you want to run multi-group analysis, you have to uh, have at least 160 in each group. If you have yes. the minimum for each group, okay, doesn't matter. The sum is uh, higher and lower. So you can get minimum power for uh, analyzing each group. Okay? Got, 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 got your point. Second question. Uh, and third question, uh, okay, third question. Yeah, okay. uh, third one, third one uh, was uh, um, uh, 
minimum percentage required for comparison like 30 70 Uh, is is it uh, can we compare is it the educate what do you uh, mean percentage? minimum what do you mean minimum percentage for comparison means uh, if 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 in uh, if uh, if the percentage of a female respondent in our one group is 30% and uh, the male okay. respondent so i explain this one in the last question there is no any percentage or magic number right okay only okay. only the mean, uh, each group should meet minimum sample size right right okay the last one and last one is uh, uh hansler's mga which is quite simple as compared to the other permutation test or some is yeah it you accepted? can you can report only mga uh, ansler mga so is acceptable for public because the, this method is established is an established method and uh, you can refer to publication to support this method so is enough but i uh, actually the always the uh, reported both permutation and the pls mga mm -hmm. and they try to compare the result from these two methods but it's not uh, compulsory you can only stick to pls mga and ansler okay thank you very much i got i've got many no things no problem thank you okay. i have i have one more question uh, should i proceed uh okay. let's see uh, is there any question from others and uh, if the uh, others have no any uh, question yeah you can we can go with your question uh, okay so my question is regarding uh, like uh, once we we start analyzing the mo uh, moderation uh, if we have multiple moderation for a let's say i have a uh, three independent variable and uh, one dependent variable at the same time i have uh, three moderator for each three parts So, right. uh, so can I run the moderation, like interaction effect, all together, or do I need to run uh, moderation uh, for each moderation once? My suggestion is uh, to run uh, your framework once with the only one uh, moderator, because actually, when you add the three uh, uh, interaction effect, these three interaction effect will uh, because actually this is multiple regression equation. so when you add the, a few more variable this will influence on effect of uh, other interaction effect right and the, there is a possibility to uh, change significant difference to insignificant yeah got my recommendation is uh, go with the one moderator in uh, uh, one uh, analysis and assessment and then delete first moderator and uh, include second uh proof like uh, in in regards to normally assessing the uh, structural model uh, so the three moderators should be in build there right uh oh, for assessment of for assessment of structural model the uh, three independent variable three moderator and oh. one dependent variable assessment of a structural model uh, when you apply interaction effect right Uh, before before applying interaction effect like once i'm just trying to you know the assess the measurement model and normally yes. structural model you 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 can assess measurement model and structural model before and without including moderator and reporting so don't need to uh, report a structural model and measurement model uh, by including moderator moderator is only to compare a structural model and path coefficient between group 1 and group 2 high and low level of moderator right so uh, if you want to if you want to test your hypothesis and your hypothesis is the effect of iv on dv so no need to include moderator so you uh, can assess measurement model and structural model without including moderator and then to assess moderation hypothesis include moderators one by one and check the uh, significance of the uh, interaction effect and the difference between path coefficient for group 1 and group 2 for high and low level of moderator okay thank you so much okay. yeah, prof uh, prof uh, i'm working on a model uh, that is that have five independent variables and one moderator and one dependent variable okay yes. 
uh, and the and the moderator is a continuous variable not the uh, not the dichotomous scale yes okay okay now uh, uh, for uh, for reporting the results uh, how i'm going to report them uh, um, uh, please listen to them and you can correct me if i'm wrong somewhere uh, for reporting my my model what i would do uh, moderator i would regress moderator on dependent variable and all the independent variables on the dependent variable then i would you know uh, not regress i mean arrow arrows towards the dependent variable then i would run algorithm simple algorithm uh, pls algorithm or assessment of measurement model and structural model yes yes no Why? just for, for just for my human model you don't need you don't need the include moderator for assessment of measurement model and structural model in first step you okay. you can you can run this is exactly same question uh, with the last question with the, your friend uh, when you uh, uh, have moderator and you, uh, first you need to run uh, uh, your uh, framework and assess measurement model, uh, measurements model and structural model without including uh, moderator and report the result then you can include moderator and assess interaction effect. Okay. Yeah. Simply at the end, we'll report the that whether the moderation was significant or not, and before that, we'll report moderation. No interaction effect. Interaction effect. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Interaction effect. Okay. 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 That was tricky. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is the last session of this uh, online course.